Hey YouTube, this is Rasmus and Park Fan 62. First, before I begin, I want to apologize for lack of videos over the past month, month and a half. That is because of storage phone issues that I had. Um, but I have fixed all of that. So in today's video, this is NXT versus 2.0 versus today. Now, I'm going to talk about a lot of this the best I can, so let's get started. Um, in 2010, um, NXT started as a reality-based TV show, so um, while it did have some wrestling here and there, it it had stuff like you know who could go around this court the quickest or who could you know name five wrestlers off the top of their head etc um some of the biggest names who have come out of that is wade barrett caitlin um and some others now there have been others in there as well who are either still part of wwe today who have been part of wwe so people like Naomi, AJ Lee, and all these others. One of the biggest ones who was in that as well was um, Bray Wyatt, uh, who at the time was going by, uh, I forgot what he was going by at the time. So, um, also they were using talent from, um, because they, had their other developmental program at the time, FCW, which was based in Miami, I think it was. So they were kind of going, using some from that. Um, now, uh, it, in, in February, on February 23rd, 2010, uh, NXT debuted on the Sci-Fi Channel. Um, but by October of 2010, it was replaced with SmackDown. Um, in 2012, um, it, WWE revamped NXT uh, to a developmental league. So they cut ties with FCW at the time. And they wanted to focus on... Um, NXT. So, um, in 2012, it became a one-hour broadcast on the WWE Network. Um, and in 2014, uh, it became international on the WWE Network. Um, now, during this time, um, they were at a place called Full Sail University. Um, and th so this is where they would tape all their shows, including pay-per-views. Um, and in February of 2012, uh, they had their first pay-per-view under the takeover name called NXT Arrival. Um, some of the biggest people who've come out of that, uh, that is still either main eventers or really well-known people have been people like Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Um, I think Shinsuke Nakamura was in there or it may came late at a later date. Other people are like Samoa Joe, who's in AEW. Um, and all these other people. Um, so some, even some of the women who were in that around this time are some of the bigger names on the Raw and SmackDown roster. So people like Alexa Bliss, Carmella, um, Rhea Ripley, um, and so many others. Um, in 2019, uh, it was announced, or it was announced that, um, in October of 2019, um, NXT would be getting their TV deal with USA. So in October of 2019, or it was late September, one of the two, 
um, they had their first broadcast, which was two weeks before AEW Dynamite had their first um, ever Dynamite show. Um, now, during this time, um, up to about 2021, um, AEW was kicking NXT's butt. But the thing about it was this. You're comparing a main, essentially a main roster show to a developmental show. So, in it was 2021, it was announced that um, NXT was going to Tuesday nights. Um... In September of 2021, it was announced that um, NXT was going to become 2.0. So, at this time, they were focusing more on younger talent. So, some of the people who are in NXT currently... Um, so, you have people like Roxanne Perez... Cora Jade, uh, Kaden and Katana Chance, um, and all these other big name stars. Um, in 2022, um, there was a sideshow that with the NXT name came up, um, which was called NXT Level Up. So, a lot of the times with NXT, they will have people maybe debut on NXT Level Up to see how they get over with the crowd. Um, that replaced uh, 205 Live, which was um, the uh, a lot of the pe people who like to do flips and all this other chats. Um, in September 2022, it was announced that uh, the 2.0 was going to be dropped. Um, part, the biggest reason for it getting dropped was, one, partially because of new management. Um, because during this time, this was when... Vince McMahon was getting away from WWE. So, you have a lot of the stuff Vince McMahon was doing at the time was getting pushed out, which was that. Um, and so... Because at the time, Vince was pushing, especially with the women in NXT at the time, you they were uh, pushing the sex part of it, so you had a lot of that. And then it was announced recently, um, October 1st, I think it was like October 1st or something like that, of 2024, uh, NXT is going to the CW Network, um, where originally that was going to be uh, the NWA, um, but because of stuff with them last year, that kind of cut its ties. So, as you can see with NXT, um, it's had a very... weird history um and actually NXT is not uh WWE's first developmental league um others like I said earlier was FCW um another big one long time ago was OVW um Ohio Valley Wrestling some of the biggest people to come out of that was people like Randy Orton Brock Lesnar, uh, Dave Batista, uh, and them. So, as you can see, 
you have that. Um, so it is going to be interesting how the future of NXT and what is to come. Um, also, one of the biggest changes to NXT have been its bookers. Um, basically, from in inception through 2020 or 2021 um, was Triple H. Well, when he ha was having his health issues, he had to unfortunately step down. And that's where Vince McMahon um, came into play. The Vince McMahon way of things, you could really tell. So, when Triple H came back, um, um, one of the things that he did was he appointed his best friend uh, and D, D Generation X member, Shawn Michaels. Um, now, how he got the NXT job, I'm not entirely sure, but... Sean has really turned NXT around and it's made it almost like a must watch show.